Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimby Camper. I just wanted to take one second to say thank you if you're a member of our community. If you're not, please think about subscribing so that you can get our most up-to-date content as it comes out. Also, if you like our content, hit that thumbs up button because that lets YouTube share our videos to more people. Hey guys, welcome to this week's adventure. We're boondocking this week. We're back here in Sitico Creek, which is in East Tennessee. It's in Teleco Plains, uh, between Teleco Plains actually in Vonor, Tennessee. In one end of the road, if you're just coming up to scout, which I highly suggest you do before you come back in here with a camper or anything. But if you go in uh, to Indian Boundary, you can take Sitico Road off to the right and you can get on the end of this road You'll go for a couple miles, then you'll hit campsite 14, which is back across a, a little bridge there. And you keep getting to these campsites in descending order. Um, and the road goes all the way through to the other end where you get to campsite one. And that's still Sitico Road. Right after Sitico one, it branches off into a two lane road. So this is like way back in the woods. This is not for the faint of heart. You will hit some potholes you luckily won't run into a lot of brush like dragging the top of your camper but these sites back here are excellent one oh, thing that i did want to mention to you guys is if you bring a camper in here on Sitico road you're going to be going slow that's going to make some people mad because people are going to be behind you a lot of times there's nowhere to pull off to let people around you and you're going to be going slow and they're just going to have to deal with it okay but every now and then there's an idiot among us, okay? So I was going up this uh, this hill, I'm gonna show you right here, and it's kind of washboardy, and it was, I thought I might have to drop down into four wheel drive, but I didn't, but it's kind of washboardy, and I was going up, and it's pretty steep, and I had this truck behind me, and then all of a sudden I look over, and the idiot is passing me on the right shoulder. Now, I didn't know, I didn't even know, but there was some gravel over there, but you know, there's a branch hanging down, it was definitely not safe. So you have to watch out for you, but you have to watch out for the other idiots that don't respect the road and don't respect you driving down it. A lot of them are big enough for a large camper. I don't know if I would really want to bring anything bigger than our camper in here, which is 30 feet, but it's possible. It's all based on your comfort level, driving your rig and how well you do with it and how far you want to push the envelope there okay now i will tell you that i came through and i scouted these areas because like i say i would not come in here with a camper without scouting them uh, i do have a couple of backup plans for you if you live further away you could go to site one and it's right off a paved road it's a big loop um, with just open camping area there you could go there and drop your trailer for a day or so and drive in through here and check everything out. Or you could stay at Indian Boundary, which is a real nice campground. We've got a uh, video on that. I'll put in the description as well as uh, link it here. But you want to drive back here. So there's three ways into here, okay? Like I say, there's the way from Indian Boundary. There's the way from the end down here, which is going to be the best route if you have a longer trailer. Do not come in through Teleco, which, you know, just some of those hills would kind of get a little uh, uh, incline there. It's not real bad, but there is a uh, bridge between sites 12 and 11 that I would avoid if I was in a camper because um, right after the bridge, there's like a, the gravel's dug out a little bit and there's like a four or five inch incline just getting up onto the pavement there. And I think a lot of campers might drag on that. These are a lot of one lane roads as well as one lane bridges. Uh, I've only seen a couple of uh, signs for weight limits and I'll post one of them here. Most of these bridges don't have any weight limits posted, but you have to be very careful. They are, like I say, single lane bridges. I wasn't nervous going across any of the ones that I went across with the camper. If you're coming back here to the middle section, so I stayed at side 11. I want to show you some more about that. But if you come in from the middle to go to the middle section, 
and you have a small camper like a pop-up or something you can try taking a road called buck highway now i want you to understand that that term highway was being very liberally given it's a one lane road, it's real windy and twisty. It's really hard if you come across another road, another car in order to pass and that kind of stuff. I did bring my fifth wheel down that. Now, that was a mistake because when I first turned off of a Highway 360, it's actually a road called Chestnut that turns into Pug Highway. So you turn off there and it goes down in an incline more than I thought it would. So that caused me to uh, bend one end of my um, soft topper bracket there that holds my bar in, which is easily fixed. Uh, and it also scratched my camper a little bit, which I'm okay. I knew that that was a possibility. Um, and there was one sharp turn where I did see it touch the rail of my soft topper. However, we were almost the way through the turn. We were turning and going up an incline. So I knew that that was a possibility. The truck was going up and the camper was like still flat a little bit. So it did touch the rail there, but that was controlled. I went ahead and went through it because we were at the maximum um, angle there when it finally touched and that didn't cause any damage at all. But I am going to go out past campsite one and straight down Citico Road. I'm just going to go over the sites back here. I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be showing you some different pictures of the beautiful streams and woods around these campsites. And those pictures in particular are not going to be correlated with each site that I'm talking about. But you will see pictures of the sites as well. Of course, there's no cell signal back here. There's no communication. I did get four TV channels, which I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. I am also going to have a separate video on boondocking in general, like an introduction to boondocking. That way you can understand the things that you should probably keep in mind before you come back here, okay? We'll get into that on the next video. So back here in Sidico Creek, we're gonna start with uh, sites one. So we're gonna go in ascending order because that's the way that I suggest that you come in here. So site one is called Paradise. It is, like I say, a large loop. It's not right on the creek. It's across the road from the creek, but there is enough parking there for a few different campers. And it's fairly close to having a cell signal. I did get 3G service about half a mile down the road. So that's why I say, like, if you're gonna come scout, it's probably not a bad idea to go there. Site number two is a walk-in site. So we're not even gonna talk about that because we're talking about campers. Um, there are two or three walk-in sites and for that purpose they are okay sites but you can't definitely get a camper in them and they're usually on the other side of the road of the creek as well. Campsite number four is a very good campsite. Um, I think it's going to go among my favorite list here. It does have a double site back in there. It doesn't seem to be too bad to get in and out of and you know, it just seems to be a pretty good site right on the water. And site six is Salinas Spot. It's uh, what I would consider pretty sloped as well. And I don't think that it's reasonable to get a longer camper in. I will tell you that between site seven and eight, there are two things that are important. There's Young Branch Campground. Young Branch Campground, I'm going to personally use if I come back up here as a... Um, a backup plan so if i go through and all my sites here are full i know that i can go down to site 11 i can turn around and i can come back this way if i need to because site 11 even if it's full you there's a loop there so you can turn around but young branch is a great backup plan it is more of a campground setting but the sites are large and uh, i think it used to be a horse camp there there are some corrals and stuff but i don't think they allow horses anymore from what i've saw but it's an excellent area it's not what i would seek out to go back here but it would be a great backup plan after young branch campground you get to buck highway so that's why i said if you're coming toward the middle of these campsites it would be faster for you as long as you had a very small setup or you were in a camper van or something. Site eight is a site called Bark Camp. Bark Camp is a very nice spot. It looks like you could get a larger rig down in there. 
but you got to be pointed a certain direction. I believe it's going to be on the way back to one that you're going to be have to be pointed in order to back a camper down in there. It's going to take a little bit of doing. Hey guys, so sorry, I was working on my video for this Sitico Creek and I realized that I lost a bunch of footage here. So I'm going to have to go back and kind of fill in the pieces. So we're going to pick up at site 9 here, um, 9 through 14. So 9 is a pretty decent site, but it, again, it's got the slope going down in there. So you got to be careful with it. And then I think it, it is one of those big open places at the bottom for a couple of different people. But I still don't think you can get a bigger camper in there, okay? Site 10 is the uh, site that I was standing in in the rest of that video. It's just kind of right off of the road. Uh, I think that one decent sized camper, less than 30 foot long, maybe even 30 foot long, I think I could get my fifth wheel in there, would be fine. Um, but probably you're gonna have to go down to like Young Branch, turn around and come back because you're gonna wanna back in so that your uh, front door is looking at that creek that you was looking at behind me while ago. Site 11 is the site that we stayed at. It's a big open field there. There are like a, a lot of spaces there on the edge of the creek where you can fit quite a few people. There's probably like six people uh, set up camping along the creek. And then we were between uh, them and the road in another field type setting. But this is also a great area to go in to uh, turn around and go back to those other places that I talked about if you need to go back past Young Branch. Young Branch is probably gonna be your best turnaround for most of those places. But if you're gonna to go to site 10, then you're probably gonna to have to turn around in 11. Site 13 is a huge site. That's actually, there's camping on both sides of the road there. Um, there's a road that goes back to another spot, which I'm gonna cut in here. So guys, there's just one more thing I wanted to add. By the way, I'm here at uh, site 11 in Sitico Creek. This is where we stay. Uh, we were not near the creek, uh, creeks on over along here, along these trees, but this was decently full when we came in, but everybody had enough space, so it was okay. But one thing I wanted to add is if you go to site 13, which they call Double Camp, there's a road that goes off to the left there if you're going in ascending order. That road actually makes a real big loop, uh, it's just like eight or ten miles with far gap and comes back and loops uh, i think it's between sites 11 and 12 but you go all the way up on top of the mountain and come back down you do get a little bit of cell signal in there for just a minute as well but i just wanted to tell you like if you go all the way down to 13 and you turn down the uh, double camp creek road then there are some small sites there that i saw a uh, like a pop-up camper in on our travels yesterday and apparently you can go down there from what i was told that road was in horrible condition after some storms and stuff but uh apparently they've done some work on it because it was actually better than Sitico road here for that first part you can see where there has been quite a bit of storm damage because they had uh, a lot of like trees and stuff in the water that were forming little dams but just wanted to let you guys know that there is some additional camping back in here besides these sites then you have site 14. Site 14 is the site that I uh, featured earlier when the little video of my truck driving across the bridge. So it is just a concrete bridge. There are no weight limits listed on the bridge. And there's, it's not real steep, but there is a, a sloping going down and then it gets flat and the slope going up. So I think that if you had a pretty decently long sized camper, you would probably have some tail drag along the slopes. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.